And first up at 530, there's a good chance a major retail pharmacy chain closed its doors recently, not far from where you live. Hundreds of Walgreens, Rite Aids, and CVS stores are closing shop, leaving many without nearby access to a pharmacist. This week, senior health correspondent Monica Robbins takes, us, takes a look at the issues from the pharmacist perspective, as this happens to be National Pharmacy Appreciation Week. And their insight might just surprise you. The days of the corner drugstore are ending. Rite Aid, CVS, and Walgreens all announcing store closures nationwide. Ohio especially hit hard. The reasons are complex, but set drug reimbursement rates from insurance are at the forefront. It's hard to operate a pharmacy when you get reimbursed uh, below your costs on a, on a prescription drug. And so a lot of operators are closing up pharmacies as a result of that because it's hard to keep the lights on when you're getting paid less than your costs are. An issue now being discussed in the Ohio legislature, but even if stores stay open, there's another major problem. They just don't have enough pharmacists. It's a workforce crisis that's going to lead to a public health disaster for our patients. Lee Vermeulen is the CEO of the American Association of Colleges of Pharmacy. He says not enough people are going into the field. We need to make pharmacy cool again as a profession. I think the chains closing make it seem like you're at risk for losing your job if you're a pharmacist but there's so much more to the story. Ohio has seven pharmacy colleges. Catherine Trump, dean of Neomed's College of Pharmacy, says classes have been thin, but help is on the horizon from some of the chains. I'm seeing more scholarships for their technicians as well as potential students going into pharmacy school. Walgreens has really partnered with the deans of the colleges of pharmacy to start new initiatives. One of their goals is to increase pharmacy applications by 10%. Um, in the upcoming years. The trouble is that they're not getting these changes made quickly enough. And what it's doing is it's producing a problem where people don't want to go to work in the chains. Jessica Awad left a major pharmacy chain because she felt it put profits ahead of patients. In larger chains, I feel like a big dilemma that a lot of pharmacists deal with is that they go into pharmacy wanting patient care. But a really big issue is that we deal with a very high workload, a very high volume of scripts that we deal with daily. And so as a result, a lot of patient care kind of gets put on the back burner. She now works at Northeast Ohio-based Discount Drug Mart. There's never been a day that I've come into work and felt like the patient wasn't the priority here. While your local pharmacist may be your first interaction with someone in the field, there are dozens of jobs a doctorate of pharmacy can obtain. And yes, your pharmacist is a doctor and the most accessible member of your healthcare team. When it comes to medications, really nobody gets more medication education through school than a pharmacist does. And so when it comes to understanding how they all interact and what they do in your body and how that all, that they're really the best resource for that. So I want to go back to explain that set drug reimbursement rate. It refers to pharmacy benefit managers or PBMs. They're middlemen created to reduce administrative costs for insurers and they negotiate costs between pharmacies and health plans. They now control about 80% of the prescription drug market when it comes to reimbursements. In February, 39 attorneys general, including Dave Yost, called on Congress to take action for PBM reform. But bills are still sitting in health committees in Ohio and federally. Now, tomorrow, we're going to take a look at today's pharmacist and the misconceptions most of us have about what they actually do. This, and it will th surprise you. They are represented by a massive lobbyist group. Absolutely. And that, from my understanding, that has a lot to do with where we are right now. You know, but all 50 states have passed some form of PBM reform, but not when it comes, only about 20 refer to uh, reimbursement rates, and there's still not enough. That's why 39 attorneys general said, no, we need to do something more about this. Mm -hmm. So when, it, when a pharmacy says, we're not gonna, we can't sell you this drug because we don't get reimbursed for it, y you know. Yeah, how, how, <laughs> it, it, it does seem to defy logic. Yeah, it does. All right. Look forward to the, tomorrow's report. Mon, thanks. Sure.